Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS and uh, we have completed till chapter 8 and also chapter 12 was done along with chapter 7. Now we have to do, uh, do two big chapters, chapter 9 and chapter 10 which uh, we will do it in at least 3 or 4 parts each. So this will be the part 1 of chapter 9 and the chapter's name is National Movement 1919 to 1939 era of mass nationalization so like you see in the picture it will have the coverage of entry of Mahatma Gandhi into Indian national movement and important events like Jallianwala Bagh, the Rowlett Act, the Montago reforms then um, non-cooperation movement and how it was suppressed by the British government and we'll see a lot of interesting things so <coughs> this is I'm talking about only part one so chapter 9 has even more interesting events which will happen so that we'll see in subsequent parts uh, please uh, uh, watch all the previous parts because history is always good when you learn it in the order of timeline only then you will be able to connect or relate different reforms or the policies of the British government and also the struggle which is happening by the Indian national leaders so let's begin so first is what was actually happening in world politics or how did it influence the nationalist leaders and how did the Indian uh, struggle shape up within India during the 1919 economic hardships so obviously the British policies were causing too much problem for the Indian economy we have already learned the uh, economic uh, drain theory in the previous chapters and uh, how Indian economy was crumbled totally while the uh, British government was uh, taking all the wealth and riches back to Europe so the industry too much imports were happening so the net exporter uh, which was India net exporter changed to net importer <coughs> Indian industries were in loss products were high priced, the artisans and merchants were losing jobs due to weakening of industries, peasants were facing high taxation especially during world war one which happened from 1914 to 1918 because the, these taxes were used for funding the British soldiers in the war, Indians were not at all uh, happy with what was going on but they had no other option and they could not survive due to poverty educated middle class we have seen this uh, before also people were educated but they were unemployed because there were no options for them even the civil services which started were not allowing much Indians to enter into it continued imperialistic attitude of the superpowers so even after the world war one the Europeans had no change of heart or no change of policy if you remember the last chapter we saw like why the Indian nationalists supported the world war one the moderates were supporting because they thought the British will give uh, something in return the extremists were supporting because they thought they will get self governance if they support the British now uh, only the revolutionaries were doing some heroic actions here and there in pockets of area across India but what happened was even after the war nothing was given in return by the British government they were busy dividing colonies among themselves. Paris Peace Treaty happened. You will learn about it in world history when you learn World War One and the consequences of it. And it was peaceful for them actually, the Peace Treaty. But it was painful for the colonies. Why? Because they were busy again splitting off the areas under them within themselves. So that each of them will be happy and they will end the war peacefully. So militants rise in Turkey, Egypt, Iran, Afghanistan, Burma, India, Korea, Philippines so across Asia if you see everywhere militants were rising at this time also there was a huge impact of Russian revolution which happened in 1917 if you know Lenin was at its uh, highest power at that time and the Russian revolution was at, it, was at the peak so Indian youth the revolutionaries were taking inspiration from those movements and were trying to do heroic actions within India. Bolshevik party of workers overthrew the Tsarist government. Tsar is actually the uh, head or the ruler at that time at Russia. So he was overthrown by the Bolshevik party under Lenin. We learn it in world history. They rose to a new power of socialist Soviet Union. You know USSR was formed. 
gave equal rights to Asians within their boundaries. October Revolution proved that a well-organized, united and determined group of masses can take down any power. So this was the inspiration they got. If people of or the youth of India, they come together in a well-organized and well-planned way, then they can take down any big power. Because already last chapter we have seen Indians were ready or they, they had the energy within them, but the leaders did not make use of the energy properly because they did not have a proper plan or the leaders themselves did not have a unified ideology. That is why earlier reforms or earlier movements were failing. If you remember, Bal Gangadhar Tilak wanted self-governance, uh, Arvind Ghosh wanted full independence. So the leaders themselves were not in unity. So now the youth taking inspiration from October Revolution and Revol the entire Russian Revolution, they started to make a well-defined group or plan. But meanwhile, what was Britain doing? Britain, even after World War One, they did not have any change of policy. They were usually uh, behind their carrot and stick policy. So that is what we learned today. Carrot meaning something to appease the INC leaders or the nationalist leaders. So that was Montego Chelmsford reforms. And stick, stick is the something which they will do, punitive action or they will take strict harsh action against the Indians if they feel like Indians are not listening or obeying to the law, uh, the laws which they have made. So that is the Rowlet attack. So carrot and stick both we will see today. So this is Montagu and Chemsford, the pictures you see. So last time also I told you Montagu is the Secretary of State and Chemsford will be the Viceroy. That is how they name the policies like Morley Minto. Morley was the Secretary of State and Minto was the uh, Viceroy. Okay, so this is also called Government of India Act 1919. The previous one was called Indian Councils Act 1909. We will be doing all the acts in detail when it comes to the administrative chapter. I think it is chapter 15 of Spectrum. Also better than Spectrum, I think uh, Lakshmikanth is a very good source for you to learn all the act. The starting of the uh, Lakshmikanth itself, they have mentioned all the acts starting from 1773 Regulating Act to 1947 Indian Government of India Independence Act. So that one we will do in detail because questions always come, at least one question about any particular act will come in the UPSC, so we have to do it. But as of now the timeline we are looking into is 1919 and the reform is Montagu Chemsford reform. So few important points alone about the reform we will see now. Diarchy uh, at the provincial level not at the center, at the provincial level. So what is meant by diarchy? The subjects actually were sub, uh, divided into two categories, reserved and transferred. So the reserved will be under the executive, that is the viceroy himself, reserved subjects. And the transferred subjects will be under the legislative. You know like the uh, council always had two sections. One is the viceroy's executive council and other is the imperial legislative council for the Indians and others. So subjects were also divided among them based on transferred and reserved only in the provincial level. But at the central level what they do? Central level bicameral legislature was introduced. That is the lower house and upper house. In the right side picture also you can see the same thing. Even now in India we have a bicameral legislature in the center and most of the states also have it. About I think five states do not, five or uh, seven states do not have uh, bicameral legislature. Uh, that we will again uh, tell you in our next uh, uh, CTS series, Confusing Topic Simplified, where we tell you a trick of how to remember the state names which do not have the both the Vidhan Sabha and Vidhan Parishad, that is the bicameral legislature. As of now, you just remember like all states in India do not have bicameral legislature at present. But in the center we have the Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So 1919 Act was the first one to introduce such a split up or such a setup. So both houses had different tenures, reservation for Muslims, six nominated members, so reservations were also there in both the houses and it was different also. Women could vote at provincial level, this was also given for the first time in this reform. Budget, 25% could be voted by Indians. If you remember, last time in 1909 what happened, they could vote on single individual items but not budget as a whole. So this time it's like budget vote you can do 25% of it. And even previous to that, previous to 1909, there was 1892 Council Act in which budget could be discussed but could not be voted. So if you see reform by reform, 
these people, the British, are giving small, small improvements alone because they wanted to simply give a carrot to Indian moderates or Congress leaders. So this is how they did their appeasement. They could have given everything in everything together, but they won't do. They'll keep everything or little bit for next time, so that so whenever agitations happen, they'll give small, small reforms. At center, executive council, three out of eight would be Indians. So you remember 1909, first time one Indian got seat, that was Satyendra Sinha. Please remember these facts. If you don't remember, like watch the videos again. And this time it is three out of the eight Indian, three out of eight would be Indians. So three people got uh, entry. Not important to remember the names. Only the first one, Satyendra Sinha, you should remember. And what were the drawbacks? Obviously, when you know the right point, uh, the actual reform points, you can write the drawbacks easily. So there was no full franchise. Everyone did not have a right to vote like we have today. Execu Executive Council had veto and powers to overrule decisions of legislature. So even though Indians who were there in legislature makes any decision, the executive could veto it. Division of subjects not satisfactory. So we saw the reserved and transferred subjects, and also it was not satisfactory. The more powers and more important subjects were all under reserved category which is under the executive council. Allocation of seats to provinces was not at all uniform. Punjab uh, military, Bombay, common, these are not important to remember. Different places which should have been uh, given more seats but they are not given. It, the uniformity was not there when the provinces was getting seat allocations. What was the INC's immediate reaction? They had a special session of the INC at Bombay in August 1918 under Hassan Imam. So usually they have all their meetings in December, but they had an immediate session in August itself because they wanted to uh, discuss these reforms. And final uh, conclusion was overall reforms were disappointing and unsatisfactory. So they were not happy. Remember the president's name of the special session, Hassan Imam. And now the main important person, the father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi is coming into picture. Already we know the timeline now, it is 1919 and uh, by 1915 itself, Mahatma Gandhi had arrived in India. Before that, he was in South Africa. In this particular slide, we'll see what and all he did in South Africa before entry into Indian soil or Indian politics. So, uh, what we should remember is, even though 1915 he reached, he did not participate in the Home Rule League movement or whatever was happening at that time because he wanted to first uh, travel around India as per the advice of Gopalakrishna Gokhale and study all the problems of India or he wanted to see the actual India or the real India and connect with the masses. Only then he could think of entering into actual national level mass movements. So first we will see his history in South Africa, Gandhi in South Africa. So these pictures you see, the stamps and uh, the other uh, second and third picture is Mahatma Gandhi in a train in South Africa from where he was thrown out actually for racial overtone. His, uh, that was the reason because the fair officers who noted him told like you are brown skinned and you are not one among us, you cannot travel in a train like this and he was thrown out of the train. This was the first happening in his life where he faced discrimination and then he decided to raise his voice against all the problems faced by Indians in South Africa. Not only Indians, all the others who were not Europeans. So, but why did he actually go to uh, South Africa? He went there for a case because he was professionally a lawyer and he went for a case of his friend Dada Abdullah in 1893. He initially went for actually only the case but he happened to stay there over 22 years and he will come back only in 1915. So, this, see, this picture is actually taken from the movie. Gandhi movie you should definitely see because it shows a wide range of events and every history aspirant or anyone who studies history let it be whatever exam or even if you are not taking the exam to learn about the entire events of Gandhi's life and how he shaped Indian national movement into the way it happened and how India got independence you should definitely see Gandhi movie because it will be 10 times more beneficial than watching a particular video which like 
the one I am presenting now or reading spectrum. It is 10 times more than that. It is very beneficial for all the aspirants. So please watch the movie. So Mo uh, Narendra Modi also when he went to South Africa uh, after he became Prime Minister, he has travelled in the same train in the same coach. Okay. And the next picture I'll explain later. So seeing the plight of fellow Indians, he decided to stay there longer till 1914. 1894 to 1906, it was moderate struggle. Like same like in Indian uh, uh, context, how the Indian leaders were first uh, busy with petitions, prayers and protest. Mahatma Gandhi also thought like the higher officials were unaware of these problems and it is the officers who are just uh, discriminating people. He thought like, okay, I'll raise it to the government and they will take action. But soon he understood like it is not going to work. So 1906 to 1914, eight years, he was engaged in passive resistance and that is when the concept of Satyagraha was framed by him. Satyagraha was against, first thing was registration certificates. The Indians in South Africa, they were forced to carry a certificate, a paper with thumb impression and they were meant to keep it always in their pocket and they should present it whenever a que officer questions them. So it was like discriminatory uh, policy only against Indians. So he was against and this picture is actually that one, same, it is from the same movie. He is collecting it from all fellow Indians and putting it in a, uh, a dustbin kind of thing and he is burning it publicly. So the officers will take him into custody. That is the first uh, event by or the first uh, uh, activity done by Mahatma Gandhi in his life against the British. So campaign against restrictions of Indian migration. There are also restrictions of Indians travelling from one place to another within South Africa. So that also he raised his voice. Then he set up the Tolstoy farm. That's the name of the farm or ashram which he set up in South Africa. The same model thing, he will come back into India and form into Gujarat and many other places. He will be forming it, the Saparmati ashram and all. Campaign against poll tax and invalidation of Indian marriages. So in South Africa they were like uh, not considering the marriages as valid if it is not conducted via the Christian uh, rituals, the European rituals. All the other Hindu or the other marriages were considered invalid. So that also was one issue for which Mahatma Gandhi raised his voice. Negotiations with Hardinge. Hardinge was the Viceroy, if you remember, Delhi conspiracy. Sachin Sanyal and Raj Bihari both threw a bomb at hard disk. That was the Delhi conspiracy. So if you remember, you should learn to connect each event when you learn something. C.F. Andrews, General Smuts is also, he's also shown in the movie. Uh, negotiations happened and almost all the demands were accepted. So that was the first win for Mahatma Gandhi and he turned out to be a leader for the Indians in South Africa. He was gaining popularity. Also in India, back in India also, Gopalakrishna Gokhale came to know about this and he used to uh, spread the uh, doings of Mahatma Gandhi within India. Masters had immense cap capacity if united together under a leader. Developed his own style of leadership, the Satyagraha. So that is what I said, GKG uh, Gok Gopalakrishna Gokhale raised the uh, things in India as well. Non-violence, sufferings, never hate your enemy, never retreat fearing consequence. These are certain ideals of Gandhian style of politics. Never retreat, never give up until you win and you should not go to uh, undertake violence. Some, one body and one newspaper which is important, Natal Indian Congress. Natal is a place in South Africa. Natal Indian Conference was a Congress was a body in South Africa uh, under the leadership of Gandhi and newspaper was Indian Opinion where he wrote lot of journals. So please remember these names. Now Gandhi reaches India and before he enter into any national movement, three important uh, small small movements you have to remember which is very important because uh, it is over 100 years, under 125 years in which this happened and it is actually the anniversary now. Champaran, it happened in 1917, Satyagraha in Champaran, if you see the book by Dr. Rajendra Prasad, the book cover which I have given. And uh, left side is the stamp which was released for 100 years of Gandhi survival in 2015. And uh, in the center picture, you see Mahatma Gandhi with a person in the right, that is Rajkumar Shukla, who actually invited him to the Champaran, the place Champaran in Bihar, where uh, the actual problem happened. So we'll see in detail uh, three movements you have to remember. One is Champaran, one is Ahmedabad, and one is Kheda. Okay, Champaran, Ahmedabad, Kheda, C-A-K. So maybe cake or something. That is how may most educators will tell you to remember, C-A-K. 
okay so we'll see the uh, content he arrived in 1915 so 1915 january even now the pravasi day uh, is being celebrated in india because he is returning from another country so um, uh, that is the reason why we celebrate that day and he decided to tour india for one year without any political activity he was not in favor of home rule home rule movement like i told and also because the world war was happening he had his own ideals or principles and he told like we should not attack or go do anything against the britain when they are busy with the war it is not again not uh, in line with his policies right means to protest in non violent satyagraha that he told only non violent satyagraha is the right method to protest so three major events happen we we'll see one by one champaran satyagraha 1917 so it's important now it's 100 years it's called the first civil uh, it's not called actually but it can be considered as the first civil disobedience there is a difference between civil disobedience and non cooperation we'll see as the slide proceeds so this is called a first civil disobedience so what was happening in uh, rajkumar shukla invited him to look into an issue of indigo planters of champaran bihar in uh, bihar what was happening is the britishers were forcing the peasants to plant 3 by 20th of the land with indigo and this system is called teen katya system 3 by 20th will be planted with indigo forcefully they were asking to plant it for their own profit motive and they were forced to sell at a price fixed by them so the farmers have to do all the hard work and they will not get the money also and high rents and taxes were extracted illegally german synthetics replaced indigo so there were uh, alternatives coming out instead of indigo but still british people did not allow them to stop cultivating the uh, this thing so indians were suffering the peasants in bihar so that is the reason uh, he will enter this was later joined by rajendra prasad J.B. Kaplani, Mahadeo Desai. So we should remember these people were with Gandhi right from the beginning, from his very first movement. Gandhi was asked to leave, but he defied the order and demanded compensation. Committee was formed for discussing the issue, and Gandhi was also made a part of the committee. He convinced the committee of all ill doings. Finally, he got 25 percentage money back as compensation, and in next few years, Britishers left the place. So this was the big win for Mahatma Gandhi. he got connected to the masses he could get back the compensation what he demanded so you should know this is civil disobedience that is you are asked to do something you won't obey it and instead you will demand something if you simply don't obey it it will be like non cooperation you are like you are not cooperating but if you make intern demands over uh, disobedience that is called civil disobedience movement so you should understand the slight difference okay now this is champaran satyagraha important because it's 100 years now we'll see the next one ahmedabad mill workers strike so ahmedabad and kheda next two are both in gujarat so this can be called as the first hunger strike by gandhi okay upsc can pick up these things that is why i am mentioning so please make a note dispute were happening between mill owners and workers regarding plague bonus so the workers were demanding some bonus the employer was not giving and strike was going on so gandhi will obviously enter to help the workers and he told the workers demand for 35 percentage increase in wages the employer finally told we'll give you 20 percent okay but gandhi told no we want 35 percent only then we'll stop and i'll go to hunger strike until death and asked ask the workers to remain non violent that was his key he never went into violence he will just do his satyagraha after tremendous pressure on mill owners the demand was agreed so again a win for mahatma gandhi third one kheda satyagraha which is 1918 okay these two events are 1918 both are in gujarat first non cooperation movement you can say so here it is like you won't cooperate to the laws so let's see what happened crops failed in kheda district of gujarat due to drought okay crops have failed according to revenue code if yield was less than 1 by 4 then they were entitled to remission but the authorities denied to they had the right of remission okay they were supposed to not be taxed it's not like pay extra tax not be taxed if uh, any drought or something happens so this is like actually openly they did not come and accept it but finally due to gandhi's resistance and strong will power uh, secretly they issued instructions like only only who can afford to pay pay it else don't pay so it was a, again a win for mahatma gandhi 
Vallabhai Patel and Indulal Yagnit became Gandhiji's followers after this particular event, if you know. Vallabhai Patel is also from Gujarat. So, after Kheda Satyagraha only, Vallabhai Patel came in touch with Gandhi. So, you should remember, Rajendra Prasad was with Gandhi from the first Champaran movement and Vallabhai Patel is with Gandhi from Kheda Satyagraha. Significance of these three movements, importance of Satyagraha was proven by Gandhi to rest of India. Closer contact with the masses. Now, he was the only one who knew their pulse. He acquired respect from youth across the nation. Nation got its leader. So, Gandhi has become a mass leader. So, that is the main uh, agenda with which Indian nationalist will proceed in all the other future proceedings. Let us see in detail. So, we saw the Montego reforms just a carrot. Now, we will see the stick policy. Okay, Rowlett Act 1919. The newspaper cutting is available on the right side. Every member of central legislative actually opposed this act. Okay, Rowlett is a person's name. Uh, left, left bottom, you can see the picture. Even after opposition, it was executed. This act was implemented. It was called the Black Act in Indian history. If you remember that also, because there are different nicknames for certain acts. There is also a gagging act for, uh, I think, the Vernacular Press Act was called like that. So, Black Act, Black act is Rowlett Act. It authorized the government to imprison any person without trial and conviction in court of law, thus enabling the government to suspend the right of habeas corpus foundation of civil liberties in India, sorry, in Britain. So, they were defying their own principles of habeas corpus. Usually, when a person is arrested, within 24 hours, he is brought in front of the court and he's, he's, uh, the trial is done. But here, by Raul attack, it was like, you can arrest anyone and it was was not to be reported to the court or person was not to be brought in front of the magistrate which was a very harsh kind of law. So Gandhiji called for a nationwide protest but constitutional protest failed. Okay. So he wrote in Younger Nationalist. Now he went in touch with the, uh, went and had touch with the Home Rule Youth and Pan Islamist. So Gandhi always did this. He always used to gather people from all classes and all religions because he wanted a pan-India movement. He will never take a single community or talk about only one religion. He will always take the Indians as Indians themselves from every class. Nationwide Hartal, fasting, prayers, disobeying certain laws. So if you see everything is non-violent. Masses now found a direction and a leader. Thanks to Gandhi's leadership, peasants, workers, artisans all joined the movement. If you remember, the previous leaders were not able to use the actual energy of the masses for a uh, mass struggle. But Gandhi had this great aura or great quality that he could rope in everyone together. Salvation could, could come with masses, could come when masses were awakened and became active in politics. So he believed like only if masses join in active politics, then India could reach salvation. Large scale violent anti-British riots happened across India, but Gandhi never uh, opted violent methods. He always stayed non-violent. So, one important event which is a follow-up of Rowlett Act is the Jalian Wala Bagh Massacre, which is a very sad event in Indian history. Again, the left bottom picture is from the movie Gandhi. You have to watch it. I am saying it again and again because it is very important. The right side bottom of the picture is General Dyer who gave order to fire at Innocents. The book is a Butcher of Amritsar and the top uh, is the picture which I took from Google. Bullet marks are there still present at Jalian Wala Bagh. So a board is kept there now. If you have a chance to visit, please visit the base also. So we'll see what was the event actually. After the Rowlett Act, you know, people could be arrested. So Saifuddin Kichlu and Satyapal, they were arrested. Okay. So people obviously will protest. People engage in peaceful protest in this. So it was a small park and people gathered there for a peaceful protest. Jalan Walabar. But General Dyer, who had his mind of his own, did not even think what is happening and he simply did not like people gathering for uh, any kind of protest, whether it be peaceful or violent or non-violent, he did not care and he entered with an army. It had only one entrance actually, one entrance and one exit point. And uh, he simply ordered his men to open fire at all these people. Thousands of people died. There was a well inside that uh, park and people were jumping into the wells. And even then they were shot and people were killed. And whole Amritsar was turned, India was in shock. Even when General Dyer was questioned by his higher officials, like uh, the door was small and even if it was a bigger door or bigger gate, will you have, an, because he had a tank with him. If, if the gate was big, would you have taken the tank inside? That's what the officer asked out of like sarcasm. But he answered like, yes, if I had a chance, I would have done that also. 
that much cruel was his mind and that is why such a sad incident happened in india and what happened was ramindra tagore renounced his knighthood knighthood is a title sir or something some title will be given to some personalities so he renounced it he told i don't want this title in protest if you remember when annie besant was arrested uh, in 19 uh, uh, early 1900s that time subramanian iyer had renounced his knighthood so remember such facts it is important for prelims gandhi ji couldn't bear this violence and called off the protest on april 18 1919 so whenever some violence kind of thing happened gandhi ji would immediately recall everyone and tell like no more protest nothing and he will stay silent for some time until he comes up with his new plan so this is the rowlett act and related jalian wala bag massacre next important thing which happened in 1919 was the khilafat movement and non cooperation movement we will do it both parallelly because it was happening parallelly khilafat movement was a muslim movement so it was not actually an indian issue uh, after the world war you know like the colonies the european powers were distributing the colonies or they were uh, hostile to other regions so turkey which is the caliphate head or the muslim uh, spiritual place for spiritual head kind of country for muslims it was actually uh, treated very badly after world war 1 okay so so this is the uh, background actually again the same things uh, what was happening within india yeah. economic hardships montago jams for reforms were not good uh, lucknow pact hindu muslim unity raul attack jail so they are just listing out the things which would raise anti britain sentiments all these things were there in people's mind and that is when the khilafat issue khilafat issue also added to all these things which we already saw in the previous slides okay after world war and attitude towards turkey ruler was disposed of position for muslims all over the world it was an insult so the effect would be obviously seen in india also because indians india also have a large population of muslims so they wanted the sacred places to be restored to turkey and ruler should be brought back that was the demand and that is the khilafat movement so ali brothers is the shaukat ali and mohammad ali as you see in the picture they two were the ali brothers so remember these brothers because i told you last time also we did savarkar brothers gosh brothers chapekar brothers uh, sayed brothers we have done a lot of things which is important for prelims so please remember when you learn each thing and should understand the timeline when each things are happening when each leaders are coming into picture okay so this is a khilafat issue so gandhi being clever he had, he knew like uh, uh, hindus or the punjab sikhs everyone are uh, already disturbed because of the jallianwala bag issue and muslims are having this issue of khilafat so he joined everyone together and decided to launch a mass movement that is how the non cooperation movement will come up okay so initially again meeting petitions and all those things then he will slowly go to boycott of british goods uh, gandhi was made the president of all india khilafat commission so remember this fact because if you can see put a statements like like this like uh, gandhi was the president of all india khilafat we would think like no he did not join any group or he did not become president of any group but you should know like he was indeed made the president of all india khilafat commission it is a true statement he saw the opportunity of mass mobilization and launching non cooperation movement support of congress was essential leaders tilak didn't want to join on religious issues why because long back when he tried the shivaji ganapati festivals on the streets people tagged him as hindutva leader so he did not want to take part in any religious issues also maybe even if, if it was a hindu movement he would have done but since it's khilafat and muslim issue his in inborn uh, instincts instincts did not allow him to join the khilafat issue again gandhi intervened and made them realize the opportunity of mass movement so now support of inc muslim league and the masses with gandhi as a leader so gandhi became a leader of everybody so prelims perspective i have picked up lot of things about the proceedings a joint hindu muslim deputation was sent to viceroy with their demands but it failed gandhi raised voice against punjab wrongdoings and turkey issue so same thing what we discussed may 1920 treaty of severs with turkey where turkey lost the entire power so it was a negative treaty for turkey so these are the issues we are just discussing the proceedings how it actually became so one another sad thing is tilak passed away in 1920 september 1920 a special session happens before december in calcutta and lala lajpat rai is the president so if you remember last video at the last i had asked you an mcq whether any extremist leader had become uh, the president of inc before independence so like you see lala lajpat rai you have got the answer here so go back to that video and see the mcq again and you should be able to answer it 
approved NCM, that is non-cooperation movement, and Khilafat agitation because he was the president. So INC decided like, okay, we'll uh, conduct the NCM now, and total boycott was decided and established. Swaraj was the goal. Entire movement should be non-violent. Hindu-Muslim unity will be there and remove untouchability. Like no one should be kept outside the sphere of mass agitation. December 1920, the actual INC meeting yearly event will happen at Nagpur. And again, it was decided by peaceful and extra constitutional methods, it should be uh, done. Gandhi said, if all goes fine, we can get Swaraj in an year. That month's conference was Mahatma Gandhi because the entire India was on the streets and boycotting British goods. Congress Working Committee, 15 members, was formed. The Congress Working Committee was formed for the first time, okay, that time, in 1919, to lead the Congress. People who left INC are Jinnah, Annie Besant, Bipin Chandrapal, T.S. Karpare, they had a difference in ideology of this and they went out of INC. Surendranath Banerjee found the National Liberation Federation. So there are a lot of bodies which Surendranath Banerjee is involved with. Please try to recollect the previous ones and remember this also, National Liberation Federation. Nationwide protest, 90,000 students left government schools and joined national schools. Subhash Chandra Bose, principal of National College, Calcutta. Lawyers gave up their uh, practice. So this is similar to Swadeshi movement which we learned last chapter. Indians are going behind all the Indian things, not the uh, British made schools or set up or officers or professions. Everyone is going for national schools and national bodies. Lawyers, Modilal Nehru, Jawaharlal Nehru, Balabai Patel, everybody were professionals, lawyers, they all gave up their practice. So you should know like <laughs> in those days, Everybody ha used to have a job and only then they'll come into politics. But now if you see on the streets, everybody are in uh, like uniform, white and white wearing and throwing stones or doing hartals and mobs. These people don't even have a job and without even completing the education, they are going and doing the party work. That is why India is in a very bad state now. Just told you the present context and why politics is in such bad shape in India. So let's continue. Heaps of foreign clothes burn publicly, picketing of shops selling foreign liquor. Ali brothers asked Muslims to resign from army. So if you see everywhere they were pulling out, pulling out their support to Britain. Assam strikes in tea plantation, railways. James N. Gupta is a name, a leader in Assam. Just remember in case massive following comes. Many local movements, Avad Kisan movement, Ika movement, Mapilla revolt. We'll see these in detail when we do chapter 17 of Peasant Revolt and Tribal Revolt. Now just remember like across India in every state, every class, everybody was following Gandhi and it was a mass movement. But how did it come to an end? It was the Chauri Chaura incident in Gorakhpur. There is a police station, the picture you can see, I took it from Google, Chauri Chaura. So 1921, Gandhi invited the talks for Lord with Lord Reading. Lord Reading is the Viceroy at that time. He was invited for talks and he instead Gandhi like asked the Ali brothers not to use race of violence. So what he was doing is usual policy of divide and rule. He told like please go and advise Ali brothers not to use violent words. Okay, but Gandhi did not fall for this trap. Gandhi told, he did not agree and uh, he told like we will continue what we are doing. Okay, government came down heavily. Government started attacking the people and what happened was Everything was banned, public meetings, presses, they started putting punitive actions. All leaders except Gandhi was arrested because they knew like if they arrest Gandhi, the, the whole country will burn. So they did not arrest Gandhi at that time. 1921, the next session, Nagpur session, presided by C.R. Das. He was actually in jail. So as an acting president, Hakim Ajmal Khan was the president of INC. Just remember, sir, even such things used to happen. If the president was in jail in the mid of the session or something, then some acting president would be acting and it was Hakim Ajmal Khan. But the session would definitely happen. Appointed Gandhi as the supreme authority of the movement, CWC, that is Congress Working Committee, insisted on launching civil disobedience movement now. So that is not only uh, do the non-cooperation, but start doing something to disobey and do something against the government. Gandhi agreed and gave conditions to the government, okay. He gave two conditions, one is release all the political prisoners which they arrested and take off the control over press. So whatever ban they have done, just take it off. But meanwhile, when things were going very good, Chauri Chaura incident happens at Gorakhpur. Police was beating up a leader, a one movement leader on the street. What happened was the mob set on fire the entire police station and policemen died. They also killed policemen and threw into the fire. So this was totally against what Gandhi wanted. Gandhi always wanted non-violent methods. But these people, because of agitation, because one leader was 
uh, hit or uh, attacked by the policemen it was turning into a totally non violent thing which gandhi could not even bear okay unhappy by this gandhi withdrew from this moment many were not happy gandhi was arrested now for 6 years okay because he withdrew and his statement was i am here therefore to invite and submit cheerfully to the highest penalty that can be inflicted upon me for what in law is a deliberate crime and what appears to me to be the highest duty of citizen so even though he was against the british he was obeying all the laws okay he told like okay i understand this was a violent thing the police station burning was a wrong thing so i am here to accept the uh, punishment so why gandhi withdrew again he thought like people were not ready for non violent method of protest british would use any violence as a reason to use arms and open fire because he did not want another jallianwala bag to happen because he thought like any small violence from our side will provoke them so they'll again come up with open firing he did not want to repeat that process is the same thing in turkey meanwhile mustafa kamal pasha you see in the picture he rose to power and made the turkey a secular state so the problem in turkey was also over. so obviously now gandhi is also silent Uh, turkey problem also over so muslims will not participate so slowly slowly the reasons which were behind the ncm and khilafat movement were getting suppressed okay evaluation muslims joined in for religious issue they did not come for a national issue they came in for only a religious issue because they knew gandhi could raise the issue of turkey with the british leaders could not raise it to the national secular field secular field okay same thing religious issue masses participated in huge numbers gave rise to revolutionaries across india many youth across india that is the time when even bhagat singh and all motivated by mahatma gandhi's leadership will start rising at very young age two myths were broken first the british serves india interest because like the carrot policy they understood like montagu reforms were just a uh, myth or something like that it was not at all for indian interest they basically wanted indians to be suppressed second invincibility that is Uh, they now they un- now they understood like british also can be defeated easily if we come into a mass uh, group under a strong leader so that is what we have to discuss in this part 1 there is a lot of more information from 1919 to 1939 so we have seen very important topics like non cooperation movement jallianwala bag rowlett act montagu reforms so all are very potential potentially uh, questionable things by upsc so please go through this video again if you I could not understand any part and feel free, feel free to ask any doubts in the comment section we will see two quotes to sound the order of retreat when public enthusiasm was reaching its boiling point was nothing short of a national calamity this was by subhash chandra bose so he was not at all happy when gandhi withdrew from the non cooperation movement after the chauri chaura incident he told like people were at its peak at boiling point and they were that much anger was there within them that so withdrawing from the movement for a small incident was a national calamity you will learn later about uh, gandhi post conflict this can be a question also because upsc has asked once about how gandhi ambedkar relation was and how gandhi uh, i think rabindranath tagore they have asked anything related to gandhi is a, a definite question whether it be um, gs1 or history options gandhi questions will definitely come so you should know his relation with the contemporary leaders next one is i would i would suffer any humiliation every humiliation every torture absolute ostracism and death itself to prevent the movement from becoming violent so same thing whatever happens he won't choose violent methods he is ready to even die but he will not do uh, violent method he will not go to violent methods this was mentioned by him in his article in young india okay okay prelims question actually i did not put it here i have to again uh, go through the pdfs to pick up the questions related to this topic so once it is there maybe in the next chapter next video i will include it in the starting Also, this chapter is anyway going to go for four parts, so I will include prelims question in that. Maybe you can answer it there, and please give feedback for all the videos. I have not received much feedback, and that is actually not so uh, motivating for us because we put a lot of effort scanning the events for you from the Spectrum textbook and give it to you the right way, which is suitable for UPSC exam. So please give us feedback on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. and for buying the entire pdf in one shot you can come and ping us in the facebook page we'll provide it to you till then till we come up with the part 2 of chapter 9 enjoy learning thank you and have a nice day